Today we're talking about Saudi Arabia, a country that America is currently trying to figure out whether they're too violent to sell guns to. Yeah, we're gonna have to run a quick background check and... Oh wow, yeah, you're gonna need to wait 72 hours for me to finish reading this document. I just recommend you get your arms at an international gun show instead, skip over all of these steps. Saudi Arabia is in hot water recently for, well, amongst other things, killing a journalist for being against them. And I think now would be a good time for me to say I love your country and urge Mohammed bin Salman to watch a funny cat video instead of finishing this one. As you can probably imagine, the US is in a tricky position right now because everyone has that friend who you know is probably up to some bad stuff you don't talk about. Well, that's Saudi Arabia, and unfortunately for politicians who are looking the other way, this latest story seems like it might be too big to ignore. So I generally don't choose to talk about stories like these, because guess what, all the facts you know, I know, and if the biggest revelation I can offer is that they used a bone saw to kill the reporter instead of a knife, well, then this episode would just be a big waste of time for everyone. Instead, today, because everybody has their own take on the story, I just want to look at what the different pundits are saying to see if we can get a deeper, better understanding of what everybody is thinking. So first, let's view the world through the president's eyes by seeing what Fox News is saying. And even more first, if you're saying, who knows, maybe he wasn't killed. The man killed in the consulate in Turkey was a critic of the Crown Prince. Are you convinced now that, that he is gone? He's been murdered? Oh, absolutely. And if Mr. Do you want to live in the world of Senator Hirano where you're guilty and to prove an innocent because you're a Republican, uh, you don't have a presumption of innocence? Or do you want to live in the Susan Collins world where you will actually be heard, listened to, and evaluated? Is saying you definitely killed that guy? Well then, you probably killed that guy. So yeah, the rest of this episode is operating under the assumption of murder. This whole issue is summed up perfectly with this Fox quote. This is a terrible clash between our nation's morality, which we always must fight for and represent abroad, and the reality of the dirty Middle East and our problems with Iran. And what I want to try to find the middle line on here is how to represent our morality without doing anything that's going to benefit Iran, which carries out far more attacks and murders and despotic acts throughout the Middle East than Saudi Arabia does. Talking about America's relationship with Saudi Arabia and not mentioning Iran is like talking about Donald Trump's self-made wealth without mentioning the $413 million he got from his dad. Just a quick warning for people with the ethics, but reports about this are generally coming from the energy policy section of the newspaper. The White House needs Riyadh to stabilize the energy market when US sanctions on Iranian oil production take place in November. Saudi Arabia, we've been planning this thing since we pulled out of the Iran deal. You can't just call us last second and nonchalantly say you have other plans. Saudi Arabia has already threatened to retaliate against US sanctions by using its leverage here, and oil prices have accordingly risen thereby benefiting Iran in its last few weeks of oil sales before sanctions take effect. Just some top shelf allies we're dealing with here. Let's put in the effort keeping them on our side. When I said the enemy of my enemy is my friend, I didn't realize that we were the enemy. Could you imagine? We could bring unity to the Middle East by annoying Saudi Arabia and Iran enough to get them to work together. Iranian crude is already selling out more than $80 per barrel. That means that even with crude exports halved by the United States sanctions, the country will still have the same income as before. The other big and more talked about issue is... We're talking about human rights, and I guess the, well, question, exactly. becomes, the question becomes, do you do business with a killer? Right. I mean, we, we, we do do business with people across the right. world who we don't agree with the way that they govern, right, Tegan? But at the same time, we got an important uh, arms sales uh, that, that's being planned. What do you do? Yeah, do we sell weapons to this government? A partnership that could be very lucrative because, believe me, they're using them. I mean, walking away from a $110 billion deal, that is a bold move. That $110 billion contract is 5% of the value of our country's total exports last year. 
And when... If they don't buy it from us, they're going to buy it from Russia, or they're going to buy it from China, or they're going to buy it from other countries. Yeah, we don't have a monopoly on military weapons. If we did, well, then we'd win wars significantly faster. So in giving up this contract, that would most significantly hit our bottom line. According to Fox, we do have a significant advantage in negotiations, though. Who needs Saudi Arabia? Right. We are in, they need us a whole lot more than we need them, and they always have, and that's not going to change for a long time. So overall, they have a few things that they could do short term that wouldn't be ideal for Americans. But we have the upper hand. The real problem is more just, do we want to burden ourselves with these large annoyances just because they killed a reporter? Well, here to tell me why we do is MSNBC. America is an idea. It is an idea. The things that we believe in, the things that we stand for, that we believe in human rights and all these things that we have stood for for the last 70 years. So money does not trump, it should never trump our foreign policy actions. That was John Kasich talking about how America is an idea. And because we're an idea, we shouldn't let things like money and reality dictate our decisions. Now, much of the reporting from this liberal side was either focused on the thought that America was an idea, that Trump had business connections with Saudi Arabia in the past, or that Saudi Arabia is lying hard and changing their story more than the movie adaptation of your favorite book. One clip did shed new light on this issue. As you rightly say, it's been become a lightning rod for people to show whether they're still on board with the Saudi story or actually they need to take a temporary step back. And in many cases, I think we do believe it will be a, a temporary step back. I think you have actually initiated a very good conversation once again, of course, today, uh, but by, by talking about longer term issues like the Magnitsky Act as well. And I added into that, uh, for my part, the, the NOPEC legislation as well. NOPEC legislation? I bet some intern took a half day after coming up with that one. So what is the NOPEC legislation and the Magnitsky Act? Let's start with the Magnitsky Act. This act, which was passed in 2012, dealt with the Russian tax accountant who was beaten to death by guards in a Russian prison after being denied health care for months. Upon hearing that a white collar person had been killed, US businessmen lobbied to get the act passed in order to sanction human rights offenders, freeze their accounts, and have them banned from entering the United States. This is designed to punish individuals rather than countries, though. So the overall punishment would look like... My guess is that if, if there are any sanctions, they will be focused on the individuals involved because basically, you know, they're these... Uh, they, they know who, who was involved uh, in terms of who flew to Turkey. So if they can personalize it as opposed to make it less about the country, which is clearly the direction that they're moving... Alright, so punish the 15 people who actually went to Turkey to kill the reporter. That sounds like the perfect amount of nothing that won't risk changing anything. But we can point to as, hey, we're doing something. On the scale of shallow gestures, I'm going to give this one the ranking of Kendall Jenner Pepsi commercial. The other piece of legislation that came up, NOPEC, well, I hate to inform you, but it was popular in 2008, although it never got passed. I have no idea why that guy would bring it up today. But what it would have done is basically allow us to use antitrust law to break up foreign governments working together to set prices. So honestly, the argument doesn't really get that much deeper. It's mainly, to sum it up in a clip I just love, Another case of guilty until proven innocent, like Kavanaugh. That's what he's saying. Jesus. You know, it is, it is really hard to keep up. With this phrase. Is that really what he said? I hadn't followed that. Yeah, why would I make it up? It just came out. You know, I don't know. I, I just don't know, you know, how to respond to that. If you can get someone to ask, did the president really say that? After the year we've had, you either have one heck of a story or you're interviewing the president. I do not say that. No, I didn't say that at all. So if you want to watch a ton of media about Trump doing a terrible job handling this, Believe me, there are hours upon hours of content analyzing every character of every tweet he's sent. We're in a golden age of insulting the president. Overall though, it seems like the criticism is less about the action and more about the words. Which I guess is hopeful. Do as I say, not as I do. Overall, both sides seem to agree that the answer is do something symbolic with no real effects. But could you just be a little bit more of a dick to Saudi Arabia while you're doing it? Just make it look like we care. Anyways, until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that.
Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent non-partisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Let freedom ring by clicking that bell and remember to give me a thumbs up. As always, thank you for watching.